So to pick up where we left off last time, we were actually using an imperfect model to calculate the coefficient of friction. If you take a look at the free body diagram, um, we just left it simple, quick and easy to understand, but we ignored the component of the weight distribution that's on the blade. You know, so there's some of the robot's weight is, is distributed up here, and that's not contributing to the traction over here. So if this model was inaccurate. Um, it's actually not, it's going to have a result that's not as high of a coefficient of friction as it, what is, what is an actually in reality. Now this, this number actually makes sense because you would expect it to, between, to be between some number between 0 and 1. Uh, car tires get 0.7 uh, between the, you know, on, on dry asphalt and 0.4 on wet asphalt. So we're in the right neighborhood, but we're not super accurate yet. So I redid the model. Now we've got the free body diagram. It still shows the full weight of the C1 robot drawn uh, as if there's a force vector going straight down through the center of gravity of the robot. And I weighed the robot at 240 grams total. But to get the component of that force that's just on the rear tire, I had to use two digital scales. Just like this and then a little spacer on top of each one because the sumo is a little wider than the scale is. So you just kind of pop it on there, zero, every, zero it out with the um, little plate on there, and then you can measure. And, and that, that's what I measured, and together they add up to 240, so everything's looking good so far. So now to redo, refer back to the free body diagram I had on the other side of the board, uh, I just redid the calculation using 151.8 grams instead of the full weight. And let's see. Uh, the mass of the coins was 103.7. I don't fast forward through this part. 103.7 and 151.8. Point six eight three. So that's our uh, coefficient of kinetic friction.